Dear ladies and gentlemen, my name is Salvador Simo. I am the Gen Director of the Mental Health Chair at the University of Vic, Central University of Catalonia, and also leading the research group about mental health and social innovation. And it's my privilege to be here today with you to share some insights about this powerful technique that's for the boys. I have had the privilege to work in refugee camps. For example, I was in Bosnia, 93, 94, 95. I was in Guatemala refugee camps, 96. In 99, I was in Kosovo. And all during last years, I've been able to participate in amazing European projects working with refugees like Comintegra, Interact. And now I am very honored to be part of PrEP project, Interprofessional. And all this experience made me aware about the extreme importance that it has to develop research when working with refugees, because normally it's in a crisis situation. We don't invest time to do research. We just do actions without reflections. And if we do so, we cannot ensure that we are developing an evidence-based practice and that we are creating new knowledge with the communities of refugees. So this is really important to do. And I think it's very important to integrate the positivist paradigm that, as you know, is more about to measure, it's more quantitative, to combine with the hermeneutic paradigm that help us to understand complex human facts as the meaning to be a refugee. That's very complex. And to understand that, we really need to listen to people because, as Ricard said, human beings are capable of word, action, and are we are beings that we create narrative. So it's very important to listen to this narrative to really to understand this com human complexity. And also today, more than ever, we need to develop this critique paradigm. It's about human dignity. It's about human rights. And it's about that research needs to create a knowledge that improves the life, health, social participation, sustainability of our communities, because humanity is confronting these powerful challenges today. So when we start thinking about photo wars, it was because it was people for whom it was difficult to express themselves by just using words. Just using words was not so easy for them to express. So also because so many people were making photos about the people, but we were not asking the people to take their own photos and to talk by themselves through their photos or videos. So for the boys believe that nobody should be denied the right to speak out and to be heard. So for the boys, it's about the will to democratize the research process, just to make sure that people, although they have difficulties to express themselves in a verbal way, if we do this combine it with the images, with the photos or the video, it's easier for them, and also we make sure that they are talking in the first person. So why we do photos of some of the advantages, advantages of taking photos? Because the rewards of the photograph are immediate. We have this digital camera, so we have the photo, we see the photo. We don't need to wait for three months. They are fun, they are creative. It's very powerful to change participant perceptions about their social and physical environment. It's easy to learn. Almost everybody has access. It's very easy to give access to photos. And a picture is more than a thousand of words. And also because we are looking for social transformation. So, so many times we need to pressure the policymakers and the photographs of the videos are powerful documents of denounce of unfair circumstances. So it's a type of participatory action research. We always try to promote as maximum the participation of the community in choosing the topic of the research and the best if we can train them as co-researchers. We have time to talk about this in another day. And it's about to provide a voice for those who have no to instill critical conscience and to influence the policy makers especially. So refugee communities, migrant communities are targets special groups that can be benefit from this technique, from this methodology. But anybody who is interested, who likes making photos and videos, 
for whom make a photo video can be a meaningful occupation, it's suited for this technique. We have been working with this technique with children in difficulties. We have been working with mental health survivors, people with disabilities. And it really, I must, I can say that it's really a powerful technique. So almost everybody knows about making photos. So it's more about giving clear guidelines about security, not to make any photo that can be dangerous, of course, also especially about ethical concerns. We can never take a photo without the permission. And sometimes we even need written permission about the photos from other people. So it's about ethical problems, it's about security, and sometimes it's about a little training, how to use the, the, the cameras, but today almost everybody knows it. What's more important is to make people aware that this is not about the quality of the photo or the video, it's what we are expressing through it. So we ask people to reflect about one reality, that's the topic of the research, so we ask them to, uh, to do a photo, to reflect about this. So this is the, the way. So it's about the expression, it's not about the quality of these photos. So, and the most important, we can ask the people one photo, one video about the perception, for example, of the project, as I will show you as an example, uh, and then to do a narrative about this project, just uh, sharing insights about the photo he or she has created. So we can ask what's the meaning for you to be a refugee, or how it is like, what do you like, what is it like, whatever. So you need to choose the right question connected to the question of the research. It's about the research topic, of course. In our case, we wanted to know what was the, uh, the perception of the children who were part of one project was called Todos a Galope. This project we lead in Italy and also was living in Portugal. It was about children who were facing difficult circumstances because they were living under poverty or in orphanages. They had no access to horse related activities. And we just invited them to be part of this uh, project. And this project was ensuring that them had access to these uh, activities. And we asked the children to do a photo and to reflect about what's the meaning for you to be part of this project. How do you feel about being part of this project? And one of the, uh, the, the boys, Simao, did this photo. And this is his narrative. He says, I always wanted to ride a horse, but I never had the opportunity. So from the first moment, the narrative starts talking about occupational deprivation, about the exclusion of some people, about occupations that they want to do, but they have no opportunity to develop. So it's about a fair situation. Because every time I get on the horse, I feel like there are no evolution tests responsibilities that distress me. So here he's telling us about his normal life. It's about the stress, a lot of evaluations, a lot of responsibilities. It's one of the few things in my week that I don't want to overtake. I really want to be there because I like it a lot. So it's not just saying the positive impact of the project, I really like it a lot, but it's also telling that the rest of the week is uh, it's one of the few things that I want to do. So it means that there are so many things in this week that he doesn't want. So he's talking about a difficult circumstance, life circumstances during the week. It's a feeling that cannot be put on paper. So it cannot be put on paper, but you know how this food is broken, so many insights and powerful reflections. So images are provoking all this powerful narrative. I took this photo because it's the path I have to walk to come. It is the entrance of Todos Agalope. This is a small descending path that I do when I arrive. The one that awakens that peak of happiness that reminds me that not everything is bad in life. Again, the project uh, brings happiness to the child. So as coordinator of this project, uh, I am happy. I am, I am, we can be, satisfied with the results of this project because if they are happy taking part of the project so it's a good uh, indicator that we are doing things well but the most important the last sentence is so powerful 
not everything is bad in life. In this sentence, he's denouncing that his life is really not good. So you see how the photo is provoking a narrative and really this narrative is really powerful. So through this narrative, it's not just that we can evaluate the impact of the project and say, okay, the project is working reasonably well because people like it. The child also feels happy here. He wanted to do and never had, so we're giving the opportunities. It's about human rights, but especially he's telling so many things about his normal life. So it's not just about that we can do intervention inside the project, but we also need to do something outside of this project. But what I wanted to say, just one photo, one narrative, see the amazing amount of information that this is giving to us. And of course, we can do this with refugees, as we did in projects like in Kosovo or Guatemala, we were using with all, not just with photos, but we also were using with drawings. So I would love to have time another day to, to share this experience with you. But we can do one photo one video session, or we can go and do as our partners from Karolinska Institute, like Margarita Mundaka or Erika Saba, that they were working with this project in uh, Stockholm, working with uh, refugees with disabilities. And they were not doing one session, or they were doing at least eight or eight to 12 sessions. And it was, uh, the methodology was each session, the refugee with the disabilities met, discuss and they set together the topic of the week. So during the week, they were doing photos reflecting about this topic. One week was about stigma. And uh, it was about, about all the barriers they were confronting in the community. And during the week, they were taking the photos. And then the, the session, they were sharing the photos. They were sharing the narrative. And then they were discussing and ag to making an agreement about the next topic. So you see that we can do photo boys for one session, asking one video or one photo, or we can convert into a uh, methodology or intervention that we can work with it for a 12, 16 sessions. So it depends about each situation. So really it's a very flexible technique that can give us wonderful results really. So uh, thank you so much for your attention. It's going to be my privilege to, to share more insights with you in the next future. So here you have my email, salvadorsimo at ubic.cat. And also here you have my portfolio. So so many of the projects I have mentioned about refugees, mental health survivors, whatever, are in this portfolio. They are in Spanish, also in English. So I really hope that this brief intervention is useful for you. And thank you. Thank you so much for your attention. It has been uh, really nice to share this knowledge, these thoughts with you. Thank you so much. Take care.